Today I'm giving you some game-changing advice for how to market your wedding photography. I've decided that rather than a traditional dinner tonight, I'm going to be cooking grilled and salted halloumi cheese. Let's begin. Might have cut more cheese than I had in mind to have for dinner. So as you can see, the, the grill marks aren't quite as pronounced as I would want them to be, but you know what? Still pretty good. I'd like to talk to you today about something that has been on my mind for a little while now. I've talked about it in different ways, but I didn't really piece it together until I was listening to Jim Carrey's audiobook of all things. Um, so basically what the concept is, is that your couples, um, I think this kind of trend like goes across really all platforms and a lot of different parts of life. But one of the big things I think that couples are looking for when they're hiring a wedding photographer is a guide. Uh, they have likely never been married before. They like, it's probably only going to be the only time that they're ever going to get married. So they really want somebody that can help them make sure that they do that the correct way as possible. And to most people, the correct way is the way that most people have done it. Um, obviously there's outliers, people that want to just like go wild and crazy and create something that's never been done before. But for the most part, people kind of want to do something that's a little bit better than, than what their friends have done. Um, Malcolm Gladwell or Seth Godin, um, it might've been on Akimbo. I'm going to say Seth Godin. So on Seth Godin's podcast, Akimbo, he talked about something called the wedding ratchet, which is essentially that say, say you're a group of friends. Um, and then this group of friends gets multiplied out essentially by the entire world. So it begins, you get married, to, to the person that you love, you have a wedding, you have a great time, you put on a really good wedding. Next year, your friend that was at that wedding wants to do a wedding that's as good as that, but just a little bit better because the bar has been raised just a little bit. And then the next year, a friend that went to that wedding, so they wanna have that wedding, that's the new benchmark, and they wanna do a little bit better than that. And it just kind of keeps going up and up and up. And that's why wedding prices continue to rise every single year still. Um, and that it's a thing that's just kind of baked into our culture, I guess, as human beings that, that we want to do this, even if we're aware of it, even if we can see exactly what we're doing, we don't really like, we don't fight against that. We're just like, oh yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's what's going to make us happy. So couples want a guide and it is your job to be that guide in a number of different ways. So obviously, on the wedding day, they want somebody that they can trust, somebody that they actually get along with, somebody that can just have a good time with them. Uh, my thought process is always that I want to be essentially an extended wedding party member for the day. So if they have eight people in their wedding party, I want to be that ninth person of their wedding party. I want them to feel that that's my place. Um, rather than just like a hired hand coming in doing the photography for the day, I want to be a little bit more on the inside. And with that, you get access to emotions and just moments that don't happen to you if, you, if they simply see you as a button pusher. So that's one of the big steps, I think. Um, one of the big like turning points of photography in, in the wedding space, at least, is that in the beginning, you're going to be hired as a button pusher and it's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. You are there working for the experience, working to, to work in weird and unusual and challenging environments and doing the best you can with very limited kind of time and, and lighting and uh, locations usually in the beginning. But as you progress and as people start to see you a little bit more as an artist, you start to kind of bridge that gap and you start to become somebody that they really do want to have as, as their friend circle. Um, I think that by becoming the guide, it is kind of the shortcut to this. So in the beginning, then what I've talked about on Patreon for a lot, lot like three years now almost. Um, and now if you're, if you want a founding membership rate, if you're watching this, uh, taylorjacksoncourses.com, I've moved all my Patreon content over to there. Um, what I've talked about a lot over on Patreon is creating guides and creating helpful educational material for couples and bigger than that, helpful educational material for your entire community, your entire wedding community. And outside of that, to make that even bigger, if you really wanna make a big presence, you wanna really become known in your local area and by becoming known, it's just gonna book you more and more work. Um, another strategy to that is really just becoming a local guide for your entire area. And not just like Google local guide where you review a few restaurants here and there, but something to the extent like what we've done. So uh, seven years ago now, I guess, I just came up as a Facebook memory. Uh, it, we actually did a film called Startup Community. It's actually on my YouTube channel. And it was the way that I learned how to actually do some level of film production rather than going to film school, rather than taking a course. I thought that it would just be great to, to dive in and just go out and do it. 
we picked a topic around here. I live in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. We have a university called the University of Waterloo. And essentially what's kind of happened here is more or less because of the university and a few other factors at play as well. But the university has really spawned a lot of small tech startups. And this was this has been going back a long time. So a lot of the newspapers were referring to us as the Silicon Valley of the North. And everybody hated it because like that basically pegs you to always be somebody's little brother. Uh, so we wanted to kind of build our own thing. Uh, a lot of that came because of University of Waterloo turning out amazing engineering graduates. Um, UW does a cool thing where your final year, they make you do a, a, some sort of capstone project. And if you're going to school anywhere else, for the most part, anywhere else in the world, uh, when you do a project, the university actually owns kind of a piece of that. And you have to go into deals and talk with lawyers and how to like buy back equity from your from your project to actually own it. What UW does is it's like whatever you build is just yours. Like take it, run with it, tell the world that that we're cool. Um, so because of that and the talent and just the the resources they put into that, a lot of great startups have kind of started to pop up around here. We thought that was pretty cool. We're local people, we have an eyeball out and we're we're watching what's going on. And from that, we were like, hey, nobody's really telling the story. And when they tell it on the news, it's always that we're Silicon Valley of the North. And everybody hates that that phrase. So uh, what we did was we just made a film called Startup Community. And we just went around. We profiled a bunch of the different local startups in our area. Uh, once we had a few, we cut together a trailer. And as a marketing attempt, actually, we did uh, an Indiegogo page where I was like, hey, here's kind of marketing. Um, like, here's what we're up to. Here's uh, maybe some different ways you can get involved if you want your name in the credits, if you want like to, to become a sponsor, here's how to get in touch with us. And because we asked the community for help and it was a project that everyone was super passionate about, everybody really just like pushed that out there and made it, one, we ended up in the local media. So we ended up in, in the hard media like newspapers and on the radio, I guess it's not really hard, but in airwave media, um, as well as like television and all kinds of different places that I would just never have found myself as just a wedding photographer. And this was simply all because we just did this passion project. And once the community got a hold of it, and once there was actually funding involved, and there were some big sponsorships that came in as well, uh, we realized that we had to build it out to be something that was more than just like the 15, 20 minute documentary that we initially anticipated. So by becoming kind of a local guide to basically creating an asset that now all of these places that have become sponsors of this and all, like basically anyone that lives here is going to be pretty stoked to share this project because it highlights a place that they live and it just makes it look a lot cooler than it maybe is because when you compress like a couple like, like I guess we filmed it over six months when you compress six months of stuff that happens into like an hour it really kind of makes everything look what much more incredible than it is so uh, that's essentially what we did was we followed a few startups, some of them failed, some of them succeeded, some of them sold to Google, one of them just sold a couple of days ago to Google. Um, so there was a lot of cool stuff going on. We thought that if we created the asset that all of these people could share out in the world, that we would just, one, create something that we wanted to do, two, something that would teach us how to actually make a film, and then three, something that actually kind of helps guide people that, that don't live here. So. When people are searching for our area or people are inquiring like, hey, like we're thinking about bringing, we have a Google office here now and Shopify, a huge headquarters. And when people are thinking about like, hey, like what's going on here? What's going, like what's up with this Waterloo place that now all of these people can send them this, this guide to like, hey, here's kind of the story so far. Um, feel free to check it out. And we just essentially made that as an asset. It's a essentially what it became. It was supposed to be a documentary, but you don't really want to like go too hard in a topic like that. That's a positive happy for the community topic. So what we did was we just kind of made it what the story was and we made it in a, in a happy way that is a positive ending kind of on everything that is just good, lighthearted, kind of fun, kind of also making money. And it really became easy for everyone to share it and it got a lot of online traction. It got us a lot of media attraction as well, just people talk, wanting to talk to us, which was really cool. So that big lesson, moving that into weddings and what you can do in a similar sense is really just creating the guides and the assets and the whether that's a video, a video walkthrough of a venue that people don't really know too much about yet, or how to plan your wedding in a new and interesting uh, time in the world, or s something as basic as a guide to like when you do engagement photos, like where to, where to have your engagement photos done. And while you're creating that content, maybe in the engagement session 
article or video or whatever it might end up being, maybe that's not 100%, like that's not gonna book you a wedding right away because if somebody's searching for where do we do our engagement photos, there's a pretty good chance they probably already have a photographer on the line or they're talking with somebody or maybe they've already booked several months ago. But by creating that asset, by creating something that's actually genuinely helpful that people stick around and watch, does a lot of great things for you. So if you're creating a video on say YouTube and somebody watches that video, they watch the entire thing, that means that it's a good video. YouTube wants to show that to more people. The next time somebody's searching for really anything related with weddings that matches close to that, there's a pretty good chance they're gonna kind of promote that. Google owns YouTube. So that's one of the reasons that they'll give uh, preference to, to video content. Uh, as well as like, there's just a number of SEO benefits in general that you can now be creating, that that's a blog post with a video embedded with some text to just really give it good context. So when people are searching for help, that they can come across your website and they can find you as, as the guide. And if they find you in the very beginning and you're helping them plan their wedding from the very, very start and us as wedding photographers, we have a huge advantage when it comes to the fact that we've seen the behind the scenes at a lot of venues. Even if you've been to, say you've went to this one venue one single time, if you reach out and you're like, hey, I'd love to do a profile on you guys uh, for a YouTube video as well as for my blog, um, you guys are happy to share it, use it, embed it, whatever you want to do. Uh, th there is no venue, I don't think, in the world, unless they're very, very stand up, like, it would be a weird circumstance for them to say, like, absolutely not, we will not participate in this. That maybe they're going to give you, they could go as far as giving you an interview or bringing you behind the scenes into a day. But more than likely, like, if you can go in there, you can just grab some B-roll. You can, you can literally grab their documentation that they would give to a new couple coming in to see the venue for the first time. Uh, if you're able to put all of that into a video, into a nice asset that also as yourself, as a third party, giving them a stamp of approval and creating something that's helpful for the venue and also helpful for the couple, when you do that, the venue is obviously going to love you and you're one step closer to becoming a preferred vendor that they're going to just tell everyone about. And then two, you're becoming an amazing guide for anyone that has not yet planned their wedding that is sitting at like square one being like, okay, we're engaged, now what? And if you can bring them through that entire process, figure out how it works for you like if you're comfortable to go in front of a camera that's obviously the best way if you're comfortable in an audio way you can build a podcast or if you're a writer you can you can make the text and add the images with that um, but whatever you do just figure out a way to become the guide and to be creating genuinely helpful content that helps people and when that happens people will organically share it people will stick around the longer people stick on that page on your blog the more google is going to recommend it next time and the higher that you're going to rank uh, and just generally it's better for the world to have good information out there and i would say as far as what i've seen there's really not a whole lot of people creating really great helpful content and acting as the guide to somebody's uh wedding day that that i've seen i think there's we all have a huge advantage if you're watching this you probably have a camera that camera probably does video you can get a tripod you can get a steady cam or a little ronin or something like probably get the weeble s but there are a lot of options out there to make your video production very easy. And by creating video guides for your couples, for the, the wedding industry, like interviewing, it's it would be so easy right now if I had somebody else here and I could just talk to them like, hey, what, you're a wedding planner, tell me about wedding planning. Come up with some better questions than that. But you can just ask people to, to do content together that are part of your local area. And it's a great excuse, kind of like startup community that it gave us the ability to reach out to anyone. We could reach out to the mayor, we could reach out to uh, any CEO of any co company and be like, hey, this is the project we're doing. And all of them would get back to us within usually an hour, which was crazy. Um, and they would personally get back to us, not even through an EA or an assistant or anything. Uh, so if you are creating this, you now have a license to reach out to anyone that you want to in your local area, anyone that you've wanted to collaborate with. That This is now that the, at least the, the crack in the door that if they're gonna come, they're gonna sit down with you because you're gonna give them and their business free promotion. There's a pretty good chance that they're going to want to reciprocate that by either sharing that video online or sending you some work or maybe that turns into a styled shoot that you get brought into with a bunch of other great vendors. Uh, just become the local guide to your wedding industry. Make a magazine if you wanna go that crazy. Make a just great resources and assets for your local area and this is i would say kind of a non-competitive thing because if i'm here that it's so location specific that by me giving out all of this information that there's a pretty minimal chance that well one i know that very few people actually i'm, I'm usually one of them ever act on things when they're like yeah i have a great idea i'm, I'm inspired i'm gonna go build this very very few people ever actually do it so one that's a barrier two location barrier there's just 
there's a lot of people out there in the world. So even if this video generates like 5,000 views or whatever, and that means 5,000 potential wedding photographers have seen it around the world, there's a pretty good chance that that person is not going to do something in your local area. Um, I think it's also important to, to kind of be first that if this doesn't exist yet, just start building it piece by piece and, and create the, the guide to getting married in your local area and just create it as, as big as you possibly can within the resources that you have. So yeah, that's really it to create great content, helpful content that you can put out there into the internet will organically get shared rather than you just have like paying Facebook boosted posts to get out there. I think there still is always an element of that. And if you shy away from paid advertising because of ego or um, for a long, long time, I like I was trying to set up shoots and I, I would not pay people. I thought that that was crazy. It's like, I'm doing work for you. I'm creating phot photography for, for you. You should be paying me. Um, I realize now that in order to build my portfolio that if I could have just paid a bunch of people at the very beginning and I could, that could have been the, the barrier to get a lot more couples in front of my camera to start building my business way faster. But that 100% should have been the thing that I was doing. Um, I'm gonna finish my halloumi here. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you are interested, there is, I would say the majority of the content that's over on the new website that you can still get a founding membership rate to uh, is primarily business centric. So if, if this video resonated with you, if you got a lot from this, um, which I hope that you did, it's a, it's a pretty simple concept. Make, make the guide for your local community, your local brides, grooms, uh, whoever, and, and take that to whatever level you want. Um, inside of weddings or outside of weddings to, to your full community, to the restaurant side of your community, whatever it might be. Um, there is so much hours and hours and hours, potentially hundreds of hours of this style of content uh, in the new website right now. So hop over there. Um, there's also, it's kind of separated three sections. So first section is all the skills, I guess, required to, to create a great style and a great brand, which is like off camera flash for wedding photographers and introverts guide to posing and, and how to make a highlight film if you're a wedding photographer. And a lot of those concepts will actually play into what I've talked about today if you're nervous about getting into video. Uh, and then the middle section is all about business and, and learning to book more weddings and things like I'm talking about today, just really kind of next level topics that are a lot larger than just the usual like, hey, put some money into Facebook ads and, and see how this, this blog post goes. And then the third section is even more interesting in my, my opinion. Uh, where it's all about how to travel the world for nearly free. So essentially using the skills that you learn, building stuff in your local community to go out there and create photos for brands that will actually fly you to places. And it starts as break even trips so you can you can go see somewhere cool and, and get at least the, the zero dollar at the end of the, the trip, whether that's on the flight or the hotel experience or whatever it might be. Um, but basically to travel for break even at the beginning and then eventually how to kind of parlay all of that content, all of that portfolio and, and the connections that you make into something that actually pays you. And if you wanna get paid to travel the world, you absolutely can. I think that this is the number one, or at least maybe not right now, but coming up in a couple of months, the travel industry really ne needs to rebound. And there really will be a lot of amazing opportunities out there for photographers. So if you're watching this and you wanna start traveling once uh, the world kind of calms down a little bit, um, there's going to be a heck of a lot of opportunities out there. More kind of the same as weddings that 2021 is going to be the absolute craziest year that has ever existed in the wedding photography market. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, I feel like it's gonna kind of parallel with travel. and. At least uh, myself, I live in Canada, living in the Northern Hemisphere here. Uh, it kind of goes like seasonally, which is nice. So my weddings really do kind of pack together between, I would say, March or April to October, November, uh, which means that I kind of go seasonally with that. So I'll do a lot of weddings. I'll work Friday, Saturday, Sundays um, as many times as I can. I don't care. I, I like to go. I like to work. I like to create stuff. Uh, and then in the winter, I usually kind of book it entirely off and we just do travel work. So um, that's kind of how I've structured my life. That makes me the happiest that right now I, I really am looking forward to shooting a wedding more than anything else. And there are just no weddings to be shot until um, the end of October or end of uh, August here. But then if I am at the end of a wedding season, like by this point in a normal wedding season, I would be so looking forward to all the travel that I had booked in November, December. So um, that's kind of how I play my mental my mental state to, to get through every year. Um, that's something I figured out with 10, 15 years of experience here. So uh, it takes a while. I don't think there's such a thing as work-life balance. I think it's just a thing that 
people say that really just kind of causes a lot of stress for other people and um, no one will ever figure it out, but uh, it is a lot of fun to do this wedding photography thing. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and don't forget to join me over on the new website. Get in the founding member rate where it's $6.58 per month if you're interested. So i uh, see you hopefully over there. In case you were scared for me, I didn't finish all the cheese. It was a lot of cheese. This is our new bamboo plant though.